What is an equalizer? What is EQ? How can we use EQ plugins to achieve better sounding mixes on our tracks? Hello everyone, my name is Chris Green. This series of videos is all about mixing essentials. This one specifically is on the equalizer. I'm gonna go over some different parameters for the equalizer, things that you can do for generic tracks like lead vocal, acoustic guitar, and bass guitar. You don't have to copy these settings, but I do wanna put your head in the right headspace when you're making decisions about how to use EQ in your mix. You don't have to be using Studio One by PreSonus. If you're using Logic, Pro Tools, FL Studio, any of these DAWs will all come with their own built-in equalizers. Today's video is all about EQ. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button for more content just like this. Let's get started with EQ plugins. Now here I have the song Georgia Still in My Mind. It's an acoustic singer-songwriter kind of song. The pink track is my lead vocal. The yellow track is my acoustic guitar. The blue track is my bass guitar. I'm going to add an equalizer to each of these tracks. Now how do we add an EQ plugin? Well in Studio One you can go over to the plus button, navigate to your PreSonus folder, and scroll down till you see Pro EQ. That's the name for their built-in stock equalizer plugin. What we have here is going to give us a readout of what's happening on the track. So let me go ahead and just solo our lead vocal track and I'm going to hit play. You're going to hear the lead vocal audio and you're going to see on the screen, I want you to see what happens on the readout. These city lights aren't like the stars back home. The first thing you want to do with an EQ plugin is familiarize yourself with the different frequencies. Down here we have the numbers that are associated with the frequencies. 50 hertz is right about here. 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 500 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, and 10 kilohertz. Here's what I want you to notice about them. In something like a female lead vocal, you're really not going to get a lot of 50 or 100 hertz. Take a look again at the frequency readout. The city lights on light. As you can see, her voice starts somewhere in the 200 range. This range is referred to as low mids. So here we have our low end, we have low mids, we have upper mids, and then we have high end or treble. The first thing we're gonna deal with is called the low cut filter. So on Studio One, you can click this button to enable a low cut. A low cut does exactly what it sounds like. I have a low cut set right now to 75 hertz. If I turn this knob, it's gonna change where the low cut is being filtered off at. So this low cut is now set to 1K. Everything below 1K is getting removed from what we're listening to. This is very extreme. You probably don't wanna set your low cut this high, but take a listen to what it does to our vocal. These city lights aren't like the stars back home. Now, how much information do we want to remove? Why would we do something like this? Well, we remove frequencies from certain tracks because we wanna make room for others. If I know that I'm not gonna have a lot of heavy content on a lead vocal below something like 140 hertz, I can go ahead and enable a low cut. What that will do is it will leave more room for my bass guitar track in the future. So this is a pretty common move you would have with any sort of vocals. You're gonna use a low cut. The opposite of a low cut is also a high cut. High cut does the exact same thing, but in reverse. So a high cut, we're removing treble frequencies. Take a listen to what it sounds like when I have this high cut set to 590 hertz. These city lights aren't like the stars back home. What we're left with is a very muddy sounding low mid range. Okay, this is never a move that I've ever seen on any sort of vocal. So a high cut, mainly you'll see this on the bass guitar track. A high cut is going to be used when we're trying to correct something that came across as too harsh or there's too many noises happening up in the treble frequencies. A lot of times these upper high range of frequencies, they're going to contain things like hissing, S's, things that come across as very harsh. We can dull off sharp or harsh sounds by enabling a high cut filter if you choose to do so. So those are on the outsides. On the insides, we have things that are shelves and bell curves, okay? So if I turn this low frequency on, this is a low frequency bump and it's shaped as a bell right now. So what we have is something that can be moved around by clicking and dragging. I can boost certain frequencies or if I move them 
below zero dB, I can cut certain frequencies. So take a listen as I sweep around as this vocal is being played. I'm going to move this low frequency bump. I'm going to move it all over the place. These city lights aren't like the stars back home. They shed their light on brick and mortar here. Now this low frequency orange bell that we have right here, it has an option where you can switch it to what's called a shelf. A shelf, rather than having a dome shape to it, it basically just means you're trailing off and then it eventually just flattens out. So you can see this is a low frequency shelf right now. You can also make the shelf that it's a boost. You can get pretty crazy with all of these curves. Most of the time I'm sticking with something that Studio One refers to as peaking or a bell curve because I can be a little bit more precise. Now the next thing is this Q knob. The Q knob is telling us how many frequencies, what's the width or the narrowness of the cut that we're making. So if I turn this Q up, see now we're making a much more narrow cut. We can be a lot more precise. So you need to decide when you're making your boosts or making your cuts, how narrow do you want it to be? If you want it to be narrow, you need a higher Q. If you want it to be more broad, you can lower the Q. And then also, if you don't want to click and drag on the visual spectrum, you can just use the frequency knob to specifically put it at whatever frequency you're looking for. The gain knob is how deep or how high we're boosting that certain frequency. So something pretty common I would do, of course, with EQs, you can add many, many instances of EQ plugins. But one common thing I'll do with vocals is I do a lot of cutting, mainly on the very low lows, some of these muddy regions right here. Some of this area, I'll be a little bit more respectable than I will with this orange one. And then the uppers, it just depends on when we have certain microphones that'll sound harsher than others. If Lana is singing into an SM7, it's a dynamic mic, has a foam filter on top of it. A lot of times I'll do this little boost that will give me a little bit of air or presence to the vocal. If we were using the NT2A or a condenser microphone that came across as too harsh, I might do the exact opposite and I might cut some of the upper high range. Okay. So a lead vocal, let's for now, let's give her a little boost up here in the 10 K region. Let's leave this stuff here to take out some of the muddiness. I want you to hear what it sounds like before we did the EQ. These city lights aren't like the stars back home. Now we'll enable. These city lights aren't like the stars back home. Okay, great. So that was the lead vocal track, but what about on something like an acoustic guitar? Let's add an EQ to that as well. Acoustic guitar has similar symptoms as a lead vocal, but with this low cut filter, we run into a lot of boominess with acoustic guitar. So I might even go up a little bit higher. Let's take a listen to just the acoustic guitar track. Let's see what we hear. That was my process for putting a simple EQ move on this acoustic guitar. If you're just putting your first instance, try to be as gentle as you can. This line right here tells me that I'm cutting things by about six dB. I don't want to do much more than six dBs at a time. Again, after you add compression, you might want to come back and add more EQ plugins in the future, but that would be how I handle quickly just acoustic guitar track. We have one more I want to add, which is the bass guitar track. This one has something particularly wrong with it. As I load this EQ plugin, take a listen to this bass guitar and how noisy it is. Basically, there's something going on with the electronics where hey, there's, I hear this high frequency treble content really loud in my headphones. I don't know if you could hear it just then. I'll try it one more time. See if you can hear this hissing sound. Okay, we've got some major things happening with this bass guitar. So this is an instance where I do want to turn on this high cut filter. And yes, I it shames me to have to cut this much information off of a bass guitar track. But take a listen now to the bass guitar track 
and see if you notice as much of that sizzly electronic noise sound. All right, so here we have the acoustic guitar on the left side. We have the lead vocal on the top on the left, and then our bass guitar on the right. Let's take a listen to verse two. And what I want you to notice, if we're gonna bypass all of these plugins to start with. Here's verse two with no EQ being added. These city lights on like the stars back home. Now let's turn the EQ on. These city lights on like the stars back home. They shed their light on brick and mortar here. So as you can hear, you can really EQ is one of the most dramatic plugins that you can add to your mix. And really at the root of every tone shaping plugin that you have, there's gonna be some sort of EQ. If you're a guitar player and you have something like a tube screamer pedal, you're used, to, you're used to seeing something like a tone knob, which is also kind of like an EQ as well. We're affecting these high frequency content. We're either making it dull or making it more in your face. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about EQ and how we can use it to shape the sounds that we've recorded. We can use it correctively, like we did with the bass guitar, where we need to remove things that happen by accident during a recording, something that we need to cover up. We can use it subtly with an acoustic guitar part just to remove a little bit of the muddiness. And then we can use it with a lead vocal track as well to remove that muddiness, but then also to add some presence to the lead vocal as well. My name's Chris Green. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll hit subscribe and the like button for more content just like this, and I'll see you next time.